Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please, be seated. <laughs> Human need is met by divine supply. Human need is met by divine supply. What a story we have for that today. In the wedding at Canaan. I mean, this is great stuff for us to see. Here we have the mother of Jesus. She goes to Jesus and she says, hey, they're out of wine. Fix it. Jesus kind of, I don't know how you read it, but I read it as kind of chastising mom. My hour has not yet come. And look what his mother did. Completely ignored him. Go and do whatever he tells you. I mean, she basically told him, do it. Right? Jesus tried hard to tell mom no, but in the end, he followed her request. And I just find it to be amazing in that interchange between Jesus and his mother that she asked him to do this miracle. Jesus, or excuse me, Mary knew who Jesus was. I mean, she bore the Son of God. I mean, the angels talked to her. God himself chose her, and she knew this son of hers, Jesus, he was special. So he could fix this problem. He could fix the problem of this wedding banquet running out of wine. I mentioned to you about Bible class. Here's the point for you. You know, the whole idea of serving the best stuff first so that people would, as the Bible says, become more relaxed. And then you, you bring out the cheap stuff. Look what happened here. Just take note of that one, right? Look what happened here. The fact is that the, the, the master of the ceremony says, and you save the best Till last. Nobody does that. Right? Except Jesus. Nobody does that in a wedding feast except the very Son of God. Human need is met by divine supply. You and I live in a world that has nothing to do with God. We live in a world that would cause us to want to be and fulfill all our own personal needs. When things go wrong, we blame God. When things go right, we pat ourselves on the back. And yet, God says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the doors will be opened unto you. Human need is always met with divine supply. There on Mount Calvary, there on the cross, the greatest human need of all time was met with divine supply. With blood shed, with water pouring out the side of the Messiah, with the promise of God fulfilled there on the mount, there on the cross, God's promise was fulfilled. Your human need and mine was fulfilled and supplied by the Savior of the world. Now, unlike Mary, we didn't have to get into this interchange with asking Jesus to do something that he didn't want to do, and then Mary pulling the mom card out. I mean, she did, folks. She pulled the fourth commandment out of the Son of God. Just ignored his answer altogether. Do what he says. I picture some of you who I've known so many years in here doing that. Why? Because Mary knew. This was the only way to fix the problem. Now, there's more to the story here, right? I mean, he chose vessels that they used to clean with. He chose vessels that fill them up with water. And he did this kind of magic trick that today we all are looking for, right? This grandiose trick. Put water in a jar and then dip a cup into it and it comes out wine. Well, that's not the story for us. Because it's the sin bearer of the world who was doing that which God had called him to do. Supply the needs of God's people. And we have that same beautiful interchange in the epistle lesson for us today, where we hear the great good news that the Holy Spirit is the giver of all gifts. I'm not going to go through and read each one of these, but I mean, each one of you has been given gifts by God. And he's called upon you to use those gifts in love to him and in love and service to your neighbor. And it's going to look different for each and every one of you. It's going to have a different face. It's going to be expressed differently. But it is a gift that God has given to you. I rejoice greatly 
may I say this now, in the quickness in which God has provided Pastor Carlson to this church. It's been a blessing that he brings a complete different set of skills than what I have. A complete different set of gifts than what God has given to me. And who gets to benefit from that? You. By God's grace. By his glory. And as each and every one of you is called by God to use your spiritual gifts. You know, some of you have the gift of teaching. Some of you have the gift of cooking. Thank you, Edie. That was that little breakfast treat this morning. I whispered to Edie, if I lift her, I weigh 600 pounds. I mean, that was good. Did you have a Oh, it was delicious. But the fact is, for God's gifts to us, his people, we use those gifts. We use them. Many of you who were here last week with Pastor Castor, one of my great friends of old, Pastor Castor has a gift I don't have and I don't think I will be able to acquire. He has the gift of languages. He is a beautiful linguistic scholar. He knows Greek and Hebrew. We were down in Florida a couple weeks ago when I was visiting one of our parishes, and we went to a Greek Orthodox museum. And Suzanne, his wife, who was here with them, we were looking at this mural on the wall that was in Greek, and Suzanne just thought, hey, Pastor Hardy, can you translate this for me? And I just paused, and I turned, and I looked at her husband, and I said, Dale, I need you to help. Now, granted, it was an old script of Greek. I just was having a hard time with the script. <laughs> you know, the letters were off. I just, <laughs> but the point is, that's his gift, and he knows it, and he uses it wonderfully. Jesus, the Son of God, his gift was to be the sin bearer of the world. To fill the cup of the emptiness that Satan creates in our lives by temptation and by sin. He fills the cup of God's people with the forgiveness that can only be won on the cross of Christ. Where blood was shed and water was poured for the sake of you, God's people. And together we all enjoy the gifts that God has given. Both to each and every one of us. But ultimately that gift of his son. The savior of the world. The one who accomplished what you and I cannot accomplish. The one who went to a place that we do not want to go, and that is to say, being forsaken by God. He hung upon the cross and declared to the world, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? So that you would never have to. So that you would never be separated from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. No matter what difficulty comes your way, no matter how bad of a situation you have created yourself, we love to blame other people. God comes to you in love, and just like Mary, he fills up those empty jars. He fills up that empty space in our heart that Satan has created through our own sin and the sin of others. And he packs it tight with his body and blood and the forgiveness of sins there on the cross and given to us on the altar. For God's sake, we rejoice. The Old Testament lesson for today reminds us that God rejoices in you because you are his own. You are his chosen people. You are children of the Heavenly Father. And so we rejoice because he has first called us in holy baptism to be his children. He's bestowed his gifts, and now he's saying to you, my friends, my children, go. Love your neighbor as yourself, and love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And in doing so, people will see Jesus. They will see the sacrificed lamb, they will see the sin bearer of the world, and they will see the son who says to his mother, okay. But that's what happened. I mean, he didn't have a grandiose one that he waved, he simply did what God does. He spoke, and it was so. Go, as Jesus tells all in the New Testament when he forgives them and heals them. Go, sin no more. Your faith has made you well. Go in his peace. Amen. May God's great gifts of love through the Father who gives his Son to us. May God the Son, who gives us his life and death, may God the Holy Spirit continue to bless, guide, lead, and strengthen you, now and forevermore. Amen.